GDP growth equals population growth plus productivity growth plus debt growth. Debt growth's gone, finished. What they're doing is debasing the currency to, to pay for that. That's driving these assets up, creating some of the problems. The aging population, well, that's shrinking and therefore productivity is going down. Why I really care about the exponential age and why you should all care is twofold. Firstly, at an investment level. At an investment level, this is the future of GDP because you're going to change that formula by bringing in infinite productive units, humans, which is AI, infinitely scales knowledge, and robotics, infinitely scales physical work. That's it. That's all you need to understand. We now have infinite humans coming. That changes the whole equation. Today, we're exploring the insights of Raoul Paul, focusing on the seismic shifts expected in our global economy, driven by the exponential age of technology. Raoul challenges the traditional GDP growth model, suggesting that the advent of AI and robotics could fundamentally alter the dynamics of productivity, population growth, and debt. This shift towards infinite productive units heralds a new era where traditional economic constraints are reimagined. But what does this mean for us as individuals and investors? Before we dive into the transformative potential of the exponential age, remember to hit that subscribe button and give us a like if you find our content valuable. Productivity obviously increases, particularly if we can get the cost of energy down and people are working on that. We're seeing the rise of nuclear. We're seeing that is starting to take hold. We're seeing um, um, EV technology. We're seeing geothermal. We're seeing a bunch of different technologies lowering the cost of electricity. They don't yet scale enough for the needs that we have, which is where nuclear will come in. It's all coming. So you're going to lower the cost of energy, which means that your per unit of production, per unit of energy, if energy halves, it means productivity doubles. If if energy falls by two thirds, it triples productivity. Tripling productivity with tripling uh, population is a complete change. So within this, and, and then obviously within the exponential age, there's so much more to it. And this is the second key point is why you should invest in this stuff, in technology. And crypto is part of that whole thing, the whole exponential age thesis as well, is not only will it unlock your future, but it'll get you to understand what the hell is happening and what it means. You see, I think that productivity growth and this population growth solves our debt crisis. I think what we will see is financial repression up until productivity starts increasing and GDP growth starts picking up and our problems get solved. I know that's not the most popular opinion. Most people think we're going to have a big reset and it's all going to go to shit and we're all going to go to war with each other. I think the opposite. I think we will literally completely change the rules of economics and it's coming faster than people expect. And this is why I want you to think about one thing. And this is the one thing I'm thinking about is, listen, there is another risk on the horizon. We've kind of solved via the everything code how we can unfold our futures, but I can only get you to 2030. And this is troubling me is I live in the future and I've generally been following the same trends. If I've been following the same trend for 30 years, debt demographics and deflation, but something is about to change. If the structure of, of economies is driven by population productivity, that doesn't the rules don't apply. So I've got to a point where I've realized I think 2030 is the end of the entire economic regime that we've had for the last thousand years or two thousand years or longer. And that sounds ludicrous. We are not constrained by resources. Yes, there will be some resource constraints, but yes, the AGI will help us solve them. We'll be faster and faster at solving the constraints. AI will instantly solve supply chain, instantly solve electricity generation, grids, decentralized grids. There's so much that will change. But the issue is, is beyond 2030, I start to see a world where GDP growth, global GDP growth could double in a year. It could double every quarter. We literally don't know what the impact of these technologies will have because it rewrites the magic formula of GDP. 
Now, I also don't know what business means in a world like this. What does any business mean when AGI is around? And I'm not thinking of AGI as like this super omnipotent, scary thing. I'm just thinking about infinite knowledge that's infinitely scalable. What does that mean for businesses? You know, in a few years' time, I won't even have to do these pieces. My a a avatar will just do them based on my knowledge. It's done. What does any business mean, apart from being a plumber or stuff like that, which it's actually very hard to get the robots to that level yet. Obviously, it will happen in 50 years' time. So, you know, some of the basic structural work remains. What happens when you have an AGI that helps everybody become better investors because it sees everything? What is investing? What does it mean when everybody is building technology companies using their using AGI to build products, right? The iteration cycle is too fast. We're already seeing it. I actually think OpenAI using uh, AGI to build products to get them to the state of AGI so it's not a shock and then they keep iterating. They, there's about 500 people work for that company, yet they nuke every single business that's starting to scale something in AI. It's not normal to see stuff like this. The speed of iteration blows up new companies. I'm not sure how long companies last. I don't know what is a company in a world like this. I, I really don't understand how it's going to play out. But I do know between now and let's say 2030, now I'm not sticking to that date. It's not like 2030, the date of doom. It's like somewhere around then we start hitting this economic, economic singularity, which is not the singularity, but it's economic where we just don't, we can't even predict how economies work anymore. If that is the case, then I don't know how investing works. So how I'm thinking of it myself, and I'm fortunate to have built some wealth, but I'm not the richest man in the world by far, but it applies to everybody, is I think we've got this period, this six-year period, where we need to build as much wealth as possible because things are clear. We've been given the greatest macro opportunity of all time when everything is correlated and the everything code is driving everything, then let's take advantage of it. Take advantage of it, because after 2030, I don't know what it looks like. As we delve deeper into Raoul's vision, we uncover the pivotal role of energy costs and technological advancements in redefining productivity and economic growth, the potential for nuclear energy, geothermal, and EV technologies to lower energy costs could double or even triple productivity, promising a future where economic constraints are lifted and prosperity is within reach for all. The exponential age isn't just about economic growth. It's a beacon of hope for solving our most pressing challenges, including the debt crisis and environmental sustainability. As investors and individuals, this era offers unprecedented opportunities in technology and crypto, domains at the heart of this transformative wave. The urgency to embrace these changes and invest wisely cannot be overstated. As we stand on the brink of an economic renaissance fueled by innovation and interconnected digital networks, I think we've got this six year period, that's all we're left with now, where we can really set up our future before the world changes dramatically. And we have to, we're not, we don't have the everything code anymore. We don't have most of the things we know anymore. Technical analysis, what does it mean? What does portfolio analysis, what does anything mean? What does reading news mean when you've got AGI doing stuff? But one thing I do know is that the, the digital rails will be how all of this works. Blockchain is how AI, ro robots and everything else We'll move payments around. We're seeing all the governments are moving that way. So I don't worry about that. But you know, at some point we'll get to maturity phase and the gains that we've made from the adoption phase won't be there anymore. So we need to be involved in the adoption phase of blockchain technologies before it gets to the maturity phase where the returns are more like utility returns. Now there's the applications layer. So I think the blockchain layer, just put it in financial terms, where what? two trillion-ish today. I think it goes to 10 trillion in this cycle. And we end up somewhere, let's say 2035 at 100 to 200 trillion. Right, that trend is a mega trend. Do that, do that one thing. But I don't know how much returns we get from the latter part of the cycle, because it's always the first part, right, that you make the, the real money from. I then think, okay, what bloody assets do you own past 2030? Bonds are trash. Equities have been trash. 
We don't even know what companies survive. How long do companies last for? I think they're going to be more like meme stocks. They get attention, they die. We'll see companies being built with one person. We won't need the amount of people. So everybody can build companies. Maybe they last. So it becomes like this meme economy, this ICO economy where things rise and fall and the capital cycles are much shorter. I'm concerned how does VC work in a world where AGI or, or, or just AI is iterating product companies' markets all the time? Things kind of blossom and then die. Some rise, but I think much less rise because you keep getting disrupted. Everybody gets disrupted by each other in this kind of endless cycle. So I don't even know what you know, kind of the asset markets do. So how I've been thinking about it is, well, well where do we invest beyond that? My general view, and, and I'll flesh this out in a much broader piece at some point, is that in the end, I'm I'm actually thinking about, well, okay, where is my long-term savings? Outside your lifestyle bank, outside some property that you use and live in, where do you hold long-term wealth in an economy that's so disruptive? I kind of like digital art. I think that NFT high-end digital art remains the top of the pyramid of wealth as art does now. So, you know, Stevie Stevie Cohen can own all of the houses in the world, but in the end, the whole game comes down to the art that he collects. And uh, we see that everywhere. Um, and I think we, we will see the same pyramid structure in this new economy where something digital has, has enormous amounts of value. In our journey through Raoul Powell's insights, we arrive at a critical juncture. The coming years are pivotal in shaping not just our financial future, but the very fabric of society. As we transition from the adoption phase of blockchain and digital technologies to a mature, ubiquitous digital economy, the nature of investing and economic participation will evolve dramatically. The traditional assets and strategies may no longer suffice. In this rapidly changing landscape, focusing on digital assets, NFTs, and the underlying value of blockchain technologies offers a path forward. As we ponder the future beyond 2030, it becomes clear that adaptability, foresight, and a deep understanding of these transformative technologies will be key to navigating the uncertainties ahead. Together, let's explore these opportunities, invest with vision, and build a future where technology elevates humanity. Thank you for joining us on Unscripted Crypto. Remember to subscribe and like if you're ready to journey with us into the exponential age.